What's up guys? Found a fancy little thing over here with uh, for a gnome house or a smurf house as I like to call it. We're going in. Ah! Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back. Mr. G here today, your online art professor. What are we talking about today? Today's project is the Gnome House. Gnome House, Fairy House, Smurf Hut, whatever you guys want to call it, that works for me. But my project for my class is you guys are making a little mini hut using some slabs. So focus today is on slab production design. So I had a piece, we did a, a thing a while back and they were like, we're gonna make little gnome houses and, and you guys are gonna decorate it up and dress it up and do something cool. And I'm like, that sounds great. I wanna be scary. So I made this thing. I am missing a piece too. There was like a whole, there was a tongue that came out into a little like reservoir, little water reservoir. So like a bird could land, drink some water out of it. And what well, it was a whole thing. And why? Because it's funny to me. It's basically it. So for my class, you guys are building this using slab technique design. I went, again, scary, because I like a horror unit. So here's mine. I got little deco goth, art deco gothish, gothic windows on the side, little dots for the windows, little placard at the top, little vines and trees going over the front of this. So for this project, you guys are dealing with slabs. Slabs is the key. Why do we want to use slabs for this project? Because working on how to join walls together and creating a box or three dimensional shape using architectural methods. Now for this, for the slab method, make, slab making process, number one, you want to make sure that those slabs are rigid enough to put the pieces together, but still for, uh, soft enough to where you can still carve and add decoration, add pieces in together. Now, number one thing about slabs is when you're adding those pieces together, slip is imperative. That nice goopy slip. You do want a good thick ish slip because you're adding, uh, you want to try to get a, the liquid bits of clay to rehydrate those two slabs together as you put those pieces together, because if they're not hydrated enough, they will not, um, stick real easily. Also, I like to make little sausages of clay, putting that in the seam and then putting slip over, putting slip down first, putting the sausage on top, a little extra slip, just to get it, everything hydrated up to be about the same amount of hydration between those pieces. Fire's a lot easier, less crackage that way, allow it all to slow dry out and you're good to go. Now for this project, first and foremost, you gotta do some measurements. So for my sketchbook piece, as always, when you're, draw when you're drawing stuff out ahead of time, it makes life just a lot easier. So I put what my measurements were gonna be on my house, did a little rough sketch of where the walls are. Here's the front piece, what the roof was gonna be like. I started thinking about, let's do a facade, facade to some of you people. When you're doing that stuff in there and you're trying to dress it up, you gotta think about all these little components before you go to the build phase. Once I did that, I went ahead and rolled out my slabs of clay, then uh, started taking uh, rulers and measuring each section of the piece I wanted to use. I want to use uh, a six by six by six by six by six um, size for the front of the piece. So having to triangulate the roof element, you want to work all that math out early. What I recommend doing is measure from the center, from that center post going straight up and then create your lines, your adjacent lines that are going to attach to that center post after that. You are picking up how much pitch you have on the roof. Do you want a roof that's way up like this, like something that you'd see out of Frozen where it's like these nice high art, arched, arched, yeah. High steeple-esque roofs, or do you want something more slanted, flat, something more for the planes? All right, so you gotta think about these conce concepts as you're building the things ahead of time. Next, once I got my slabs rolled out and I got the size pieces measured out, Next is texture. What textural components am I gonna add to each of these pieces? Again, on the outside of the, I got these rubber stamps. So the outside edge gives this nice rocky texture. It looks really good, especially when you put glaze on this. This is gonna look really stellar. And then for the roof, I just use a paintbrush, an old paintbrush, just tipping it down and stacking that along the side just to create. Now for me, when I was building this, I was talking it out with, with my students. I was like, hey, let's come up with some other ideas for this. Could you turn this into the cookie jar, which is another video that I'm working on. Well, we're building this thing. 
So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Everything's in the ceramic playlist. If, playlist. if it has to do with clay, it's going to be in ceramics. Building out these pieces, think about how the roof is going to attach, take off, or stay on, or if it's just going to stay on permanently, which is what I have settled on. That piece is not going to change from that form. Uh, cut a little hole in the back. I'm going to cram some Christmas lights in there, turn it into like a little uh, lit town home thing that sits on the counter, sits by the fireplace. You know, decoration that we usually see at wintertime for... Um, you know, the Christmas mantle, old school, see that stuff out there. Um, I'm a big fan of the Halloween Village, which I have a few of, and they sit out almost year round because that's how I roll. Uh, putting those pieces together, again, talking about those joints and how we're adding those pieces together, putting down that sausage of clay first, adding in lots of slip, lots of slip. You wanna make sure that it is well joined together. Putting extra pieces of clay on top of it. What I do recommend is when you're getting into this phase and you already rolled out slabs, roll out an extra slab and use that clay to make all your joint pieces with. Why? Because it makes a lot more sense. Instead of pulling off chunks of clay, rolling out the sausages themselves, doing it this way, just makes a lot easier overall now as you guys are building those pieces and adding those pieces together make sure that you're checking for where the clay is starting to shift and move over time because as you put walls together the first walls that you initially built forces moving them and that need might need to be rejoined up rehashed back together so take a second double check those joints once you get that done building the overall frame of the piece now we're going to top the roof on top as i'm putting the roof on i'm definitely using extra bits of clay trying to fill in gaps fill in joints putting a steam seam of clay at the very top there want to push all of those pieces together into that one joint seam at the top just gives a better stability overall now because i can't reach my hand in there to get the interior joints you really need to take extra time make sure those exterior joints are properly uh, stitched together as long as those are all holding together really well they should be fine through the firing worst case scenario um, give yourself some extra insurance by putting extra bits of clay on it. That's why I added the trees on the outside is to cover up extra clay on top of those joints, but also aesthetically cover those joint sections. Uh, it just adds more stability to the overall build, but it also gives a decorative addition to it at the same time. Now think about all this stuff and what you, details you're going to put down in your notes. More details, the better. Don't forget that. Real quick question, toss down the poll below. Uh, we're gonna put down in the in the notes, which do you think is a better decoration houses? Are the Christmas houses better or the Halloween houses better? I will tell you mine in a minute. Now, before we wrap up here today, I don't, uh, I will be firing this one off. And when we get into glaze, glaze for this piece, which is gonna be a, another video altogether, I am not gonna use traditional glaze for this piece. I got a very specific reason, which I'm gonna go over to in another video, so stay tuned for that. But I do wanna make sure before we close out today, a couple things, number one, Hope you got something awesome out of today's class. Please share that below. How much did you learn today? Uh, what, what things would you change to your house? What things would you have added differently? Add that below. Also, let's start going into, uh, don't forget to take care of our homework. Our homework assignments as always are, don't forget to like, subscribe, share in all various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, students as we possibly can. Educate the masses. That is my game over here. Last thing is, don't forget if you guys have a question, a comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer it from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later guys.